Welcome to the Wild Magic School Bus. This is Matt, but you may know me as TBD. This Dungeons and Dragons podcast may contain fantasy violence, language, and adult themes. Content warnings can be found in the episode description below or above. Zeph, where's what is a content description? Drew's Mustache's voice by Dr. Frank N. Furter. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wild Magic School Bus, the most unprofessional DD podcast you shall ever hear. Because we're talking about Rocky Horror Picture Show. I, of course, am your DM, Calvin Piper. And these people like, enjoy, and uh, appreciate playing DD with me. Go ahead and introduce yourselves, folks. Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, Preston. Uh. <laughs> I uh, sometimes spend some time with these folks because they beg me to play this game called Dungeons and Dragons. Little peek behind the curtain, this is Sean playing Preston, playing his character. Sean White. <laughs> <laughs> Shred some Signar. And. Signar. Signar, mate. Um, besides that, I think I play Lucy yeah. Kane. Glick Kazee. What happened to Preston? I don't know what's going on. Someone restart the Preston. I'm not doing this. He is broke. Hey guys, it's Preston. Uh, <laughs> I play Lucius Kane as my warlock. Question mark? No, he's a warlock still. Unless. All right, next. <laughs> uh, I am Matt, uh, the Asian one. I'm back this week playing TBD, the gem dragonborn fighter, level six now apparently. How do you do? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Drew's mustache. <laughs> You know that I will be playing Zeph, the gym dragon ball. <laughs> Why did you sound like a 50s prison warden? That's, that's, that's Thank you. Burner. Thank you for that, Drew. Uh, hello, I'm Will. I play Glyph Kazigi, the lizard folk artificer, also level 6. And at some point, we should probably just <clears throat> release a podcast episode where we bullshit for two hours. That's oh, every yeah, that's in the docket. Yeah, that's in the docket. Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> my name's Michelle. Do you feel seen? I play Kenneth, the human ranger, level six. I didn't see my level earlier, um, level six as well. Shut uh, up! Preston, <laughs> not everything's about my turn anymore. But it is! <laughs> uh, you can talk serious. whenever you want, Preston. I'm zooming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Maddie B, and I play Thulgren Rockrender, the Paladin Dwarf. The Depression era Paladin Dwarf. <laughs> Depression? <laughs> well, he's Gen Z. I thought you Depre- You asshole! <laughs> oh, that's that's rude. Everyone's. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, listen. <laughs> you, can, you can do that to me. Yeah. Drew saves every little tie off of his bread that he gets. Every single one of them, he has them balled up into a little a little ball. I even it. donned my socks. <laughs> you did what? <laughs> I donned them. You donned them. He's convinced. No, no darn. No, you darned them. Darned them. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think it's like it's like like you don armor. Yeah, it's like you don. I have my socks on. I even have socks to put on my feet. I repaired them. You yeah, that's when you like when you sew them. them. Yeah, you Scissors yeah. and thread. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Drew. At some point, someone's got to break into Drew that his war bonds are worth nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, While we shit. find the best way to break that tomb, let's go ahead and jump into episode of forty-one, Two. 42 of the Godscar Chronicles. <laughs> So the last time we were here, the party had learned uh, some information from Lucius about his patron and the potential to finally set his patron to rest. They were directed to uh, a couple of individuals, most notably the triplets of Bavella, 
a group of witches who lived on a mountain uh, at the very top of the Umber Hills, uh, where they potentially held the secrets to the old magic that could unlock uh, this puzzle for Lucius and his people. Uh, after surviving some avalanches and some uh, trepidatious weather, the party arrived at the top of the world, the highest peak in the Umber Hills, and had met with the three witches. After conversing with them and learning that they could indeed uh, sever the tie between uh, Warlock and Patron, the price for the ritual was announced, and the price was paid by three of the individuals with Lucius paying one dying breath, Glyph paying a few pinches of luck, and Thulgren paying a measure of talent. And now, with the party standing in a semicircle, holding their hands, looking at the coffin of Lucius' patron, which has been set on the ground, uh, their eyes closed, their minds expanding, they begin to feel themselves lifting up But if you open your eyes, you can feel that you haven't gone anywhere. That you're just kind of floating. And as the world begins to grow dark, the strange forest on the top of this mountain fading away, your eyes open and you can feel yourself drifting. Almost as if afloat in a vast open sea. You look down at your body and you can see that there's but a faint kind of whitish outline of you, almost as if you were made of smoke or vapor. Not your physical form. And as you float, you can see kind of the thin gray line of what looks to be this just ocean that you're basking in. The ends of it stretching endlessly beyond as far as your eye can see. If you look to your left and your right, you can see... No one else, and nothing else, for what seems like an eternity, or possibly just a moment. After a while, after an indeterminate amount of time, you begin to feel like something is moving, undulating through this vast gray sea. And then before you see them approach or while you watch them approach, you can see them now, these giant, massive structures, these jagged pieces of opalescent glass that kind of float around you, near you, away from you. At first, just one or two, now hundreds, now thousands. And as they float by, the closer they get, the more opulent they get, the more you can see this strange vision through them, murky and and distorted, but almost like looking through a shattered glass into a strange world beyond. And as you float, you hear a voice in your head. To find the bond, break the memory. And as that voice fades away, one of these structures floats towards you and you begin to feel yourself being pulled towards it. The image behind it, a vast dark green dotted with some blue and other strange colors. You get closer and closer and closer. You feel your form press against it. You feel yourself slip through it like water slipping through cracks in stone. And as your eyes open, you find yourself floating down and coming to rest in a vast green field. It's a valley set between some foothills and mountains off to either side. You're in a land you don't recognize. Blue skies above, birds circling above. A forest stretches behind you, a trail, a well-traveled trail sets in front of you. And winding down this trail in this valley, you can see a keep, a castle, set in the valley. Uh, it's a beautiful castle, to be sure, but it is uh, looks older, a little more dilapidated. And as you sit there and look at this structure in this place, not really sure 
what to make of it. You hear the sounds of individuals talking, footsteps falling behind you. You turn around and you can see what looks to be about six individuals walking down the path. All of them joking and talking, having a lively conversation. You can see a, all of them different species, different coming from various forms and life. And all of them walking down the path, having uh, it seems to be smaller conversations, joking, laughing, talking about something. And as they pass by, two of them catch your eye of importance. One is tallest of them all, a red dragon. Red dragon born. His uh, metallic scales kind of gleaming in the bright midday sun. His robes of arcane nature uh, with these strange runes kind of etched into the fabrics. Uh, deep blue and black uh, colorations kind of flowing behind him. A little dusty and road-worn, to be sure, but still very well maintained. The other is an elven individual. Their long uh, platinum white hair uh, bundled up into a bun behind uh, their head. Uh, a few strings of hair kind of stringing out as they, again, look a little road-weary, but seem to be keeping in good spirits. They wear simple traveler's cloaks. They wear a little bit of, they wear a, a cloak and a hood and strapped to one of their uh, travel bags, you can see a book, uh, an old book, a tome of some kind with loose papers kind of sticking out of it and uh, some runes imprinted on the side uh, and a small wand tucked into the other side of the belt. As these two are conversing, you can hear uh, one of them, the dragonborn begins to speak. Uh, he's... Well, seems like we have found the keep. Now we must find uh, the nobleman and extract him before the dragon returns. And you can see the elven individual kind of standing there looking at the place, kind of breathing, the hands on their hips, kind of squinting in the sun, their green eyes kind of shining in the light. Looks over. Roga, do you believe... We can do this. I mean, I, none of us have ever met a dragon before, much less snuck past one without causing undue attention to ourselves. I, I'm, I'm not sure of our skills. Uh, the dragonborn smiles. Don't worry, Eliandris. If anybody can do it, it's this ragged lot. And he gestures to the other individuals who are all seeming to have a conversation, a little bit of a squabble breaking out, but uh, easily making up as... They all begin to set forward towards this area and all begin to make a little stop and a little camp just on the other side of this uh, valley overlooking this large castle. Begin to have a conversation for far enough away that you can't hear it. It's at this point that you can hear a voice again. <clears throat> the voice of one of the uh, witches speaking. The memory of a bygone age... An adventurer from many centuries ago. And as that voice fades, you can see the conversation happening. The sounds begin to become clearer. The image is a little bit sharper. And now you're all here. In your forms. At least, you feel like you are. But you find yourselves, all of you, standing in the field. Not but 60 feet away from this group who are now uh, bending down, one of them bending down, digging in the dirt, beginning to explain some sort of a strategy uh, about this castle. Uh, can I do something? You're here now. Yep. Uh, I would like to... The monologue, the spell ca the monologue spell that was cast is now faded. You are now in your <laughs> capacities. Uh, I think, uh, I think <clears throat> Lucius tries to go towards, uh, after hearing Eliandris, mm -hmm. I think uh, Lucius goes up to... Uh, Tries to get closest between him and the elf. Sure. And like, even saying his name is like, Yeah. Fair eye! Uh, you begin to walk up there and uh, shout out the name. Yeah. Uh, no one pays you any mind. Start, going <laughs> Start crazy. waving violently. Yeah. Uh, no, nothing. Um, as you're uh, kind of waving around uh, a small, what looks to be some sort of a fruit tree nearby, there is a, what looks to be this small kind of. Uh, almost like a cross between a squirrel and a bird kind of a thing, like a feathered like rodent. 
uh, is perched on the tree, slowly chewing on something as you're kind of flailing around nearby it. And as you, as it catches your attention, you look up at it, and you can see the gleam of its yellow eyes as it looks at you, and you hear a voice in your head again. <clears throat> this is but a memory. You cannot interact with it directly, lest you mar what is remembered. Did you push his hands up? <laughs> Did all of us hear that? Or yeah. That, okay, okay, okay. It's it's assumed should... that everything that happens you are aware of because it's again you are you feel physically here but because this is happening simultaneously it's a weird it's kind of like, like the Pensieve and Harry Potter yes okay, okay. very yes hey but did any of you hear it the voice earlier say that to break the bond we had to break the memory find the bond uh, to find to... the bond you have to break the memory yeah I heard that. I mean, break let's get to breaking. But I think it might. Uh, so yeah, do we want to break the memory? I think it might uh, be wise to exercise a little bit of tact. Yeah. So how do we mess around in someone's uh, subconscious right now? I don't. I don't think we do anything until you know we feel like we should. The time is right. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to. You know, mess I'm not up expecting anything. like a green exclamation point to pop up. Yeah, but, but like, I feel like we'll kind of know it when we see it. Yeah, for sure. So keep a lookout to mess something up. Hey, squirrel, bird. Squirt. His name's Squawk, mate. Hey, Squawk. Squawk. Uh, you see the the creature with its bright yellow eyes is regarding all of you, Squirt. just kind of looking. Just w- it seems to just its attention readily on each and every one of you. What happens if we tamper with the memory? You may try. Okay. Is she just waiting? Like, we don't feel like we should. Are they just watching do that? us at this point? What's that? Is there anything happening? But like, the, the group is currently is having memory? the the group is currently having a conversation right now. Okay. They're all there. It's almost like uh, so. One of them, what well, you can see, it looks to be this uh, this long feet, this long and lanky feline creature with bright orange uh, fur is kneeling on the ground, drawing with a small stick, uh, and the rest of them are all kind of gathered in like a half circle, looking down as this creature is uh, gesticulating wildly and like pointing to the drawing on the ground. So uh, you're a little bit far away; you can hear the voices, but not enough to clearly make what's going on. Uh, but that's kind of where you're positioned at this point. Right. Right. All right, hey mate, hmm? sit rep. What? This is your journey. What? What are we doing here? So we're all on the same. Um. Page. Let's just watch, and then if if any if I feel like we have to do anything, I'll yell out to you guys or something like. Okay. Like I'll try to I'll keep you guys updated. Yeah. Because I I don't want to do anything. I would appreciate if you guys didn't go out of your way to do anything too crazy here. Do you, Do you know I if mean, one of them is Farah? Yeah, Mr. Elf. Oh, I mean, yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know their first name because we're cool. We're oh, like best friends or something. So. I didn't realize you had two. Yeah, no, first name. He, he, he looks right? great. I thought it was he looks great. What's he looks great. What's what? his name? Eliandris. Fairai. Eliandris Fairai. Uh huh. I w- would, I would believe that his middle name starts with an L. Oh my God, Eliandris oh, called Lord it. Fairai. Eliandris Lord Fairai. Yeah, because yeah. he's an L. Okay, I hear it. That's yeah. fine. That's, I mean, that sounds pretty yeah, yeah, no, mate. Uh, I don't really have any intention of touching anything that you don't want me to because it's not really... Yep, yeah, hands off. You know, it's kind of your thing. Okay. I appreciate it, guys. We're your pit crew, mate. You're the nice car driver. What? Exactly. <laughs> Long live three. My nose starts Come cleaning. <laughs> ain't ever going to die as long as he's in our home. Wait, are you me? There's, oh, a in, there's a rumble in the planes as reality begins to tear and rend. Well, yeah. that's right. Hey, we've read the memory. The planes, it's fucking our <laughs> well, What's the main character name from Teledega? Oh, like, Rick, Rick and Bobby. Rick and Bobby. <laughs> my next character's going to be Rick and Bobby. What would Baby Jesus do? Well, probably cry about it. Yep. Okay. So you guys are just I, observing? I just want to observe, okay. yeah, for now. Um, as, <laughs> as you guys settle in to kind of uh, observe what's going on, you can hear uh, the tabaxi stands, uh, straightens up um, and kind of uh, holds their arms up. And you hear them You hear them finish what was a very, what, probably very impassioned, impassionate speech. Uh, and they go, well, what do you think? And uh, you see this uh, dwarven individual kind of scratches his uh, dark beard. So I, I don't know, Ten Threads. It seems like a risky business. I'd say, I don't we just burst through the front door? You say the dragon's not here, we take the nobleman, we run like hell. 
And you see the tabaxi kind of turns and looks at the dwarf and goes, Because we know you don't run. And the dwarf is like, well, I hold on a second as he like steps forward, and uh, you see the last individual, a uh, look uh, very tall, uh, full plate armor. I uh, haven't seen their face yet. Uh, holds out their gauntleted hand, and stops the dwarf, and you hear just kind of like a tinny voice underneath his, uh, as they say, uh, "Peace, O'Brien." And he steps back, is grumbling, is mumbling at the uh, Roderick. Uh, the sorry, the Dragonborn steps forward, Rogar, Rogar. and says. Gentlemen, now, this is our first true adventure. It's the first time we have been tasked to work together under one banner to succeed on this task. I hope this dude gets torched. Oh, Jesus. Dragon, Dragon's, uh, Dragon's a pretty bad first adventure. He, he's monologuing. Uh, it's called exposition, you stupid. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking about the dragon. They're like, hey, let's do this. And the dragonborn no. is like, oh, on, I am convinced mind. that as long as we band together, don't lose heart, and stick to the plan as they turn their eye to the dwarf who kind of like raises it. What? Um, and Brogar nods. We will be victorious. Now... You know your rules. Let's get to it. And they all kind of nod and begin to make their way down the trail. Uh, the elf, Eleandra, stands up and kind of brushes their pants off against the wop. And you can see Rogar puts an arm out and stops them. And they both kind of stand there for a moment. A little bit of a pause. And Rogar goes, If this is too much for you, Eleandris, I understand. No. No, Rogar. I will be fine. I only say this because I, I, I care that you... I, I understand. Thank you. Um, you have taught me well. And uh, <laughs> uh, what, what better teacher than experience? Just uh, don't die. Please. I'll do my best. As they both kind of turn and walk down the trail. There's a few moments pause as you all kind of stand there and you hear the sounds of just the, the nature around you and the birds and the receding footsteps of all of them as they go. And pigeons, yes. Um, as all of a sudden uh, you hear the sounds of rustling in the bushes after they leave. Um, and you see uh, popping up out of the bushes covered in uh, misshapen twigs and leaves with like mud smeared across their faces a band of what looks to be about eight to ten goblins all kind of poke their heads up uh, and begin to uh, garble and uh, shriek at each other. Uh, okay, I appreciate the foley in the background. But I'm trying to help you guys along with the story here. Yeah, we are we're feeling, we're feeling really good about that. I appreciate that. Why does he sound like the wild thornberries? Because it's the only thing. Because apparently they want to stereotype goblins. <laughs> But yeah, if you have to picture tell. a goblin, picture the green kid from the kid from Wild Thornberry, uh. just green. Um, <laughs> so, uh, does anyone here speak goblin? Goblin. Well, well funny you should so say weird. that. Hey, is I do actually. Like do you, no, you speak yeah. goblin? Yeah, I really do. No, okay. Yeah. Wait, wait. I didn't you have an extra, didn't you have an extra language yeah, or something? And I, and I remember like, <laughs> did, did we count? talk about that? Yeah. And I was like, just take goblin because it'd be funny. Yeah. Or was it uh, like actually, it? yeah, I think I they no, think that's what not. happened. I think I think that's what happened. That's a stuff on that. Um, like, okay, funny so <laughs> as they're all shrieking and uh, garbling at each other, Kenneth, you can understand them. Uh, and what's translated is roughly something like this: Oi, is you what he said? Yeah, he best to go steal the Nova from the dragon. Well, we can't have that. Well, the dragon's not here. I oh, know. You guys. Uh, Go distract them, set some traps or something, and uh, we'll go alert the dragon. Uh, that way he can come and burn them all before they take his prisoner. Good idea. Uh, let's go and move. And I will relay this to the party, and more specifically, Lucius. Okay. Lucius is like, I don't know. Like, I can't. We can't talk to the people. We can't help them. It's a memory, right? So. I guess so are we just along for the ride? I suppose I, I we can't really. Foil I assume that we're along for the for the ride. I don't. Uh, there is a faint uh, sigh 
a heavy sigh, but exasperated uh, from the strange little uh, rat bird that is yeah. sitting in the tree um, as it just that, stares wide eyed. As at you. these goblins start moving away, yeah. Zeph says into the mind of one of them, uh-huh. Turn around. <laughs> the goblin stops, spins around. Whoa! Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, uh, totally. Did that. As <clears throat> uh, as it spins around, uh, where are you standing relative to it out of curiosity? Um, I don't know. Uh, behind a bush. So, like, it's vis- visible to you? <clears throat> I can see it. Yeah, like a head over bush. Like I, I'm over... guessing we're kind of like in the brush watching this happen on the road. Uh, yeah, ish. Yeah. yeah. I'm uh, visible. My okay. head's sticking up. So, your head's... so, as it spins around, it stops, and you hear begin to, like, garble something to itself. Uh, Kenneth, you hear it go, the hell did another dragonborn come from? Uh, and it just kind of looks at you for a second, and then slowly, like, raises its hands. <laughs> Whoa, I can see you. No, stop, right there, no. No, 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 you don't want to do that. Wait, I'll kill you. No, if you, you uh, I'm using it with Dylan. Can, 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 do I see this? All right, yeah. Doc. I, 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 I cast Eldritch Blast at it. <laughs> Go ahead and roll an attack. Uh, roll an attack. Oh, roll an attack? Yeah. Fuck you gotta yeah. roll no, a hit it, dude. Roll you. My bad. My bad, cowboy. My dumbass was told not to fuck <laughs> shit up. I, I, yeah. I'm just standing there. No, I, you're right, bro. Sometimes I'm a hypocrite. 18. 18 definitely hits a goblin. goblin? Yeah. yeah. I'm not informing Dread, so I don't get extra damage. <laughs> oh, thank seven, goodness. Seven force damage. Uh, as you hold your hand up, you feel the the temperature around you begin to materialize and form around your hand as you fire the Eldritch Blast uh, energy. Strangely distant from you. Not like... You're not feeling it the way you normally do. It's, it's not almost channel through it, me. It's like almost like yeah, starting almost like starting from where you where you conjure it. Um, but as that happens, like you can, you become very aware of your surroundings, like uh, of like, like the, the air. Like yeah. it becomes very very vibrant um, as you fire the shot. And it hits the goblin. And, you, and he falls to the ground. His arrow shoots wide. Um, as that happens, it shrieks out. You see two more turn around, uh, and you <laughs> you you hear. Oh, there's two of them now. So I need. <laughs> You too. Yes. To go ahead uh, and roll. Bro, let's initiative. watch some goblins, bro. <clears throat> let's watch I need you goblins. to go roll initiative, and yeah. uh, anybody else who's who wants to uh, preparing yeah, to. We're fighting yeah, goblins. It's good. I mean, everyone just go and roll initiative because yeah, I feel like you're everyone wants to be part of this. this. Yeah. Let's kill some freaking goblins, friends. Uh, oh damn! Some goblin <laughs> friends. No, we're not. They're not friends with goblins. It's a good roll. <laughs> oh, 22. Um, in here, are we to consider ourselves as having had a long rest since the last thing we did? Well done, dude. Given what? that it seems our to be healed? extra planar, I don't, I don't know. Um, had that. you done anything? Because you had rested before you got to the top yeah, of the sure world. Rested. We sure rested before we got to sure the rested, top. Short rested, yeah. Yeah, I, I was missing a lot of spells and stuff. Still am. Interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah apparently. Oh, wait. Let's... Wait. Sure. For the sake of this... Because, wait, what were you saying? What were you going to say? Nothing. I want you to keep talking. I don't, I'm not going really <laughs> to uh, I will say for the sake of this, because this is not you, this is a projection, this is of, a projection you. of you. Go ahead and go ahead and just uh, long rest your, yourselves to give Thank you guys you. back to a fresh start here. Oh, so. Appreciate it. Because it's an ass projection of you. Ass projection. Yeah. Which becomes uh, a way of the actual self. That okay, so... so yeah, with my, with my minus, minus okay. strength. Uh, 25 to 20? 20. 24. 24. I got a net 20. 22. 22 for TBD. Uh, 20 to 15. 19. 19 for Zeph. Nobody else? 14. I cannot uh, believe I got 14. a good initiative. For once, against goblins. <clears throat> against goblins. Well, that's they're super right. goblins. 13, 4, 4. I got a 19 the rest of us. I'm yeah. at 9. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so where were you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. I got 19. No presence. Okay. Um, that's how old I am. All right. So, top of the round. Kenneth, you're up. Let's go. 
Uh, oh, we're gonna shoot goblins. I love that shit. More like oh, that's Kenneth Wynn shoot them, dude. Uh, I will go ahead and use my bonus action to do Slayer's Prey. So within sixty feet, I get a uh, extra d6 worth of damage on mm-hmm. one of them. Uh, I'm Fuck gonna... them, <laughs> <laughs> I am going to shriek at them in goblin and say. <laughs> What's that you meant to? Your kneecaps are ours. <laughs> As you utter the uh, very common goblin curse uh, yeah. to these go- oh. to them. Um, as you utter it, you, uh, you as well uh, begin to feel the world around you becomes very materialized as you now are aware of the air, the temperature, the smells, the and stuff. Of the world. Damn. Um, as you, uh, yeah, and they, uh, you can see the two that yelled at those two now turn around and see you, and they're like, "Crap!" And you hear them shout out, and the rest of the goblins are now turning their attention. They it seems their plans are all shot to shit at this point. So yeah, okay. All right, first attack is going to be 17 to hit. 17 hits. Perfect. Nice. I love that. Second attack is another 17 to hit. Sure, both hit. Um, so, d12 for the first one. Oh. oh my gosh, the first one is 15, uh, 17 points of damage for the first hit. Uh-huh. Uh, second hit is... Bro, these are goblins. I think it's already misted, bro. Is uh, nine point. points of damage. Yeah, 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 you fire two uh, bows. You fire two arrows. Two bows. Just throw two, two bows. Two bows from your arrow. Yeah. Uh, I was using musket. Impressive. Oh damn. Okay, oh, so you yeah. fire two shots uh, from your uh, <gasps> musket kill and shot. Uh, kill shot. Yes. Yeah, so you basically uh, gosh, take out one of the goblins <laughs> with two shots easily, uh, as it just goes flying. Its body uh, very. Um, very stunt double in movie style, like getting pulled by a string back into the forest, gone. Is it a Tarantino movie's worth of blood or a normal movie's worth of blood? No, Tarantino style. Nice. Just, just if you had like, know, it's like too. you had a five pound bag of like egg yolk that you just like plastic bag of egg yolk and just hit it and just, just exploded everywhere. It's great. Um, oh, hey, hold on a second. Nope, holding on no more seconds. All right, that's fine. I think uh, <laughs> Sam has a... Also has a turn, but I don't know. I, I, uh, you use your bonus action to cast yeah, Slayer's yeah. Prey, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Sam is taking the dodge action right now. He's chilling. Which, He's doing the best. Uh, for him, is uh, pushing his front feet out as far as he can and kind of wiggling. Stretch. Oh, oh, boy's ready to that's, that, that's the dodge, so yeah. he's, ready, he's ready to duck and dodge out of the way. Um, okay, ending Kenneth's turn, it is new. TBD followed by Zeph. Uh, TBD seeing oh. this... Is the goblin that shot at Zeph still alive? Yes. Oh, okay. Seeing that happen oh, boy. by like peering around him. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, ah, man. Dang it, Zeph. So I jump <laughs> over him yep. and attack with my uh, glaive of wind. Easily covering the ground uh, in between them, you rush over and attack with your wind glaive. Yeah. Go and roll for your attack. So, oh, don't like that. Ten. Ten does not hit. Uh, they've got they got little pieces of leather and armor. Uh, so you hit, you hit and cause it to like knock over two feet, like and it like rolls over and pops back up. Uh, but it uh, does not look like you hurt it. I'm gonna use my second attack to try again. Oh, of course you may. Less. Okay, nope. Even worse. Same exact, thing. Same exact roll. You hit it again on the back oh, swing, yeah. causes it to roll the other way, and it pops back up um, and just looks uh, a little perturbed. <laughs> you just pop an action search <laughs> to get that little fit. Can I do that? You can, but I don't know if you should. It's up to you. It's you have action search, want? my dude. You take the attack. Even though I didn't land, can I still do my bonus attack? Uh, I believe I that the attack option with a glaive. You can use a bonus action. Too. No, you can just do it. Yeah, bonus action. Okay. It's like <laughs> so. I try to hit with the end of the other. Yep. Other end of the glaive. Swing with the other end of the glaive. Yep. This is a double sided glaive because it's that cool. Uh, so that's just ooh. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Twenty-three. Twenty-three definitely hits. Let's go. Murder hit. Uh, nice. Six points. Six points. Hold on. He, t- he took a total of 13. From, okay, from, yep. from me and you. Oh. Yep. All right. So you swing both times with the wide blade of the axe, just knocking around. You spin around with a short kind of like daggerish point on the other end and stab it I right through the, the foot. And as it pulls on it, and looks up at you just snarling. Um, okay. End of oh, your turn. Out. Zeph, you're up. Calvin, um, can you make that? Clicking noise, I think it was that Velociraptors made in Jurassic Park when they were like communicating through bushes and stuff. 
The clicking one? Yeah, wouldn't it look good? It's kind of doing it. Yeah, make it loud. I, I, I can't. No, <laughs> this is what we try. I, I can't. I can't. Um, I'm not, I'm I only want you to think of is like the like the car noise they made. Or the clickers from the last Okay, do that one then. The... <clears throat> that yeah. one. Okay, cool. guess what? <laughs> That's that's what everyone hears. Oh, uh, okay. Wait, is that within your? Oh my god. Are you god. turning into a raptor? Dude, please, yes. Yeah. Oh my god. But he can have to come up with a different name for it because he's never seen a raptor. This is a fantasy world. It's a uh... raptors exist. Okay, cool. So yeah, uh, they everyone right? okay. everyone around within earshot hears. What was that? <laughs> Before <laughs> the bushes that were once hiding Zeth completely part and a. Pearlescent Velociraptor comes flying. Legs pedaling so fast, like speeding. I'm sorry. Comes Wait, is it a Pearlociraptor? Yes. It yeah. is. Okay. Well, I have a different question though. Okay. Is it like accurate to the real world Velociraptor? Like, are you size feathers? of the size of a golden retriever, or are you no, a, this Jurassic, is a Jurassic Park? Park. Oh, okay, okay. No, no, no so feathers. You're a bullshit Velociraptor. I think it would have been cooler if you just like <laughs> cast that and turned in. Thought you were turning into a raptor, and you actually just turned into Ice Cube. Or like a chicken. Whoa, oh, Ice Cube rapper. <laughs> oh man, Straight out misunderstood what it was. Or <laughs> 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 oh, I forgot. Ice Cube. <laughs> Um, okay. A pearlescent ice cube appears yeah. before you. <laughs> Me- medium sized beast. A pearlescent Michael yeah. Jackson. Yeah. About five feet tall? Yeah. Okay, that's right. Um, yeah. And he comes, comes tearing right. yeah. out straight for the, the <laughs> nearest uh, goblin. Yep. Or, what were we saying there? Gremlins? The nearest gremlin. Goblin. goblin. Are you going to do that two footed jump stomp on the chest and yeah. get a face bite? Yeah, that's that's the first that's the first attack. They've got one move and it works really well. Just claws. Claws. All right, go ahead and roll your attack. Natural 20. Oh, oh shit. Oh. Let's go. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Jeff is so excited about yeah. being a Velociraptor. He's like, <laughs> having a great time. <laughs> You're living your best life. Yeah. What's your damage on that one, buddy? Um, that would be D12. A 2d8 plus 3. Damn! Jesus. That's some good. That's some good shit. Um, and that freaking druids band, they're like, I'll just conjure a creature that's so much better than I'll ever be. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, hey, sometimes you wake up that's, not a Velociraptor and you just lost. Still yes. eleven. Eleven, yeah. But I also need. Okay. You're right. Him to succeed a <laughs> DC fourteen strength saving throw, uh, which it automatically fails. Okay. Because he's, he's, he's dead. dead. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna roll. Yeah, you two foot plant into its chest. Into the ground, Keeps and in. the growl that it would made was cut abruptly. It looked up at TBD and went <laughs> as it <laughs> crunched by you. Cool. Is there anyone close enough to bite besides TBD? Uh, no, oh. not right now. Then he gets bit. Oh, you're not discriminatory. <laughs> <laughs> no, he knows I know who he, he is. I know he didn't mean it. He's no, a, no one I can get close enough to with any movement left. You use your move to get out of the bush, so. Yeah, yeah okay. Like yeah. So I lose my dang bite. That's okay. alright, next time. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for letting me turn into a Absolutely, Absolutely, bro. That was freaking sick. A mean DM would fact check you, but not today. Um, alright, so end up Zeph's turn. It is now the goblins' turns. Uh, the goblins have now all seen you and the remaining uh, blah, 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 seven uh, are going to go ahead and just like rush you guys, <laughs> just like straight up, just uh, you run towards really you all. The um, they easily, mm-hmm. uh, they easily make it to the uh, the meat of the fight. So wherever uh, Zeph and uh, Tabidi are is where they're going to kind of congregate. The rest of you haven't uh, moved Gone in yet, so range, yeah, yeah. Um, so they're going to go ahead and move in. However, uh, they're going to go ahead. Uh, three of them are going to go ahead as they pull up short and fire. Uh, into the bush at uh, Kenneth and uh, Lucius, Lucius, as both of you so are. Do we become temporal? Like, I'm a, I'm a, once we interact with the space, is that why? Yeah. Matt it seems it, it seems like they are only focused on the people who have done anything right oh, now. Okay, cool. Like we conquer so. as soon as you interact with the world. <laughs> um, all right, so they're going to go ahead and fire. Three shots are going out. Yes, sir. First one's at uh, Kenneth. That is a six. Yes. Second attack is a 15 at Kenneth. Miss. Third attack at Lucius. That is a 12. A miss. 
just arrows just zing by you guys um, as they go ahead and fire a second volley of arrows. One shot at Lucius, that's a 10. Second shot at Lucius, that's an 18. Third shot at Kenneth. That is a 18 as well. Bro, they hate my Hits. ass. They're like, yeah. sk, sk, sk. you look like riff raff right now. Uh, <laughs> I think what? You're, you're like, you're like, the, you're like the older young baby. Did you just take Reese's peanut butter cup yes. foil and wrap it around your teeth like gross. a grill? Yeah, look how That's smooth they are. I've been flattening Please don't swallow out that. Yeah, I've been hearing it the entire time. time. Sorry. Uh, okay. <laughs> Pete Panther. Nailed it. You are riff raff. All right, so uh, two arrow shots at the both of you. <laughs> that is. <laughs> Robot. Lucius, that is uh, uh, six points of damage to you. Kenneth, that's seven points I, of damage. Bro, I have actually, I actually rolled shit HP, so this actually hurts. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, and then the other remaining no, like uh, four are now surrounding uh, the uh, Velociraptor and the Dragonborn. And they're going to go ahead and do their attacks. Uh, two of them are going to go ahead and combine their attacks to do what is called a frenzy launch. Yes. So both of them are going to leap on top of, well, they're going to attempt to. Are they going to Megazord? Um, they're going to, no, they're basically going to jump, uh, use their combined uh, frenzy to jump on top of the creature they're attacking. Uh, so they're going to head and make an attack roll Megazord. on you. <laughs> uh, first one is going to do, that's an eight to hit. Uh, I don't think that that... Velociraptors don't have the AC of 8. It's 15. 15? Oh, okay. 15. <laughs> Dexy as hell, man. Uh, but that is a 16 to hit. So the second one will... So the first one leaps on top of you. You spin around wildly, and it knocks it off, and it tumbles to the ground. The second one leaps on top and and does successfully uh, execute his frenzy attack. Uh -huh. So as he jumps on top of you, you immediately feel feel the pinpricks of a small oh. dagger as it sap, 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 begins to stab you violently. Oh, holy shit. Um, Jeez. Basically foregoing their That's advantage. That's so bloody. Yeah, it's, he, they're, they're crazy right now. So he's going to go ahead and do... Bam! That's crazy. Bam. They get... <laughs> uh, six, seven, seven points of piercing damage as it shanks you uh, yeah. rapidly with Damn, its... Damn, these goblins are feisty, so... Well, when they can use their... When they can work together, yes. By themselves, no. With the power um, of friendship. Power of friendship. friendship. Uh, and then two more uh, so on TB, TV. on uh, TBD. Uh, <laughs> they're just going to go ahead and flank you with their small swords, and they're going to go ahead and use it, get advantage on their attacks. They're not yeah, frenzying no sleeping on, on you. No sleeping on yeah. the goblins, no more. First attack on you with advantage... Big and ice. ...is god-awful. 15... Miss. Mm -hmm. Second attack on you with advantage. This die is absolute garbage. The, to the biggest roll was a nine. So That's they actually hit some It's weird. So they're swinging and hitting, but you're blocking and ducking and dodging out of the way. Uh, they're very predictable attacks on these guys. They're not great at what they do. Uh, but that ends their attacks as they are now, uh, their frenzy is now renewed as you guys have uh, rudely interrupted them on their quest for glory. Uh, Glyph, you're up with Fulgrin on deck. Uh, I kind of look at what's happening uh, and then look at Fulgrin, then look back at what's happening again. I'm like, I mean, it seems like we could just... I felt like maybe we'll let them have a little fun. Yeah, but uh, I, I, no, I thought better of it, and I'm just gonna pop up and just. Beep, beep, beep. I'm gonna okay. shoot a couple times. Drop out of the so out of the <laughs> ethereal world and begin to fire your shots. Temporal reassignment. Oh, you hit it, Dresden. No, I didn't. Uh, no, those were bad. That was like a, uh, a twelve and an eleven. Uh the twelve hits. <gasps> hey. <A> one. <laughs> nope. Okay. There we go. Can, can you just? <laughs> Be better. Sorry, we're two hours in and I just rolled a dice. Uh, 13 points of damage. 13. Excellent. Uh, you fire your shot and it shatters the bone and uh, leather armor of one of them as it like, ah! like flies, it falls to the ground just angrily. Is it still uh, alive? Yeah, it's, it's still right, alive. Uh, damn it. Uh, and I run towards it and use my bonus action to two weapon fight and stab it. Okay. Ooh. Offhand attack. Man, this grill. There's something wrong with this grill. I'm on. Oh, damn. 18. Yeah, definitely got a hit. So that's good. Yeah, because it's falling apart with its foil. <laughs> Six more points Here. of damage. What you talking about? Oh, can we yeah. keep those? Uh, when we get a Patreon, we'll send that to somebody. Carve a large gash in its uh, exposed yeah. chest. Uh, it falls <clears throat> to the ground and flails around wildly. Not dead, but pretty damn close. Oh, what you think, 13 and 6, you said? Yeah. Yeah, it's not enough. 
Um, okay. So, end of his turn, Thulgren, yeah. Alright, I'm just gonna start swinging a hammer. So you, so you appear, your feet touch ground, and you rush forward. Um, I'm not gonna be the only one not having yeah, at least a little Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Jumping into the, uh, I, the fray here. Real quick clarification, uh, I did leave Pothole behind. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to bring him into no the problem. temporal realm. Uh, temporal realm? First one is 24. 24 hits. Second one is probably not going to hit. It's a 14. 14 points of damage? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, for for the second. 14, yes, hits. 14 hits. So two hits. Mm. 16 points of damage for the first one. Dang. And 12 points of damage for the second one. All right, so with two hits, whack, whack, you uh, drive your hammer into uh, the head of one of these goblins, crunching, basically accordioning this poor thing, uh, rendering it. I want one to go flying. You hear it. Uh, it's not making any noise uh, because it's lifeless. As it just kind of, uh, if anyone's ever played, Daniel, Call, if anyone's ever played uh, if you've ever played Call of Duty when they call an airstrike and the body just goes like flopping into the air, just like unrealistically, that's kind of what it looks like. Um, I don't know. That might actually be. Ridiculous. It might be. You never know. You know the ball is uh, off in the right the, spot. And yeah, is it like in the two towers where if you zoom in, you see that elf just like waving his arms, landing uh, amongst the urukai after the wall. <laughs> Well, kind of, yeah. That's okay, kind, of, so kind of the same vibe. Um, okay, so end of Thulgren's turn is now Lucius's turn. Uh, Lucius, how many how many goblins are left? There are now we've we've we're decimated like two, so we're now five. Got yeah, five. Care, Lucius is gonna be like, okay, come on, coach, and then form of dread. Spectral cowboy hat. <laughs> That's the form of dread. And then I get some really cool sunglasses too. Your hair goes really long, and your hair goes down as your head comes back up. It's a brim. And oh my god, you're right. That's exactly what happens. Yeah. The visor. That's you exactly what happens. Free the visor. from Overwatch. Cassidy from Overwatch. They changed the name. Yeah, they changed the name. Why they change problematic? Uh, d- d- creators problem. Uh, problematic real does, life stuff. Does Coach's power come from his visor? Oh, does Coach's power comes from Lucius. A new visor. We don't know where Coach's power comes from. Not Coach's power the, comes from Coach. Not even the DM. Uh, part of the <laughs> cards, probably. I just feel like he needs a visor, man. Bro, that's not cool, man. Oh, I plus six to that. So I was yeah. doing it 10 HP. Okay. All right, cool. Plus 13 temp HP. Okay. Um, Lucius is going to just hold his hand out again. Is Coffin still in the spectral realm? Is the what? Coffin still around? No. Coffin is not around right now. Lucius doesn't know where to focus his stuff, so he's going to be like... Uh, I mean, Coach is going to just... Hold his fingers out like a gun because mm-hmm. he doesn't have a thing to cast it from. Mm-hmm. So he's gonna start. He's gonna say, "All right, your kneecaps, little shits," and then he starts. <laughs> <laughs> start yep, yeah, and firing from the world around you, the Eldritch Blast uh, launches. Go ahead and roll your attacks. I gotta look. I gotta look at what I what I do. All right, all right. That's a that's a twenty to hit. Yep, yeah, that's gonna hit. I'm gonna roll for a sec- uh, a second attack. Uh, 27. 27 so, hits, yep. Now, plus, since I'm in form of dread, I'm gonna... Wait, I'm, I'm coaching now. Put since, since I'm in a form of dread, I'm gonna shoot these little shits with extra D10 of necrotic yep. damage. absolutely. Paul? Right. Hit him for uh, 10 necrotic damage. Mm-hmm. And they have to make a wisdom save if they're alive. You got this. So 10 total damage? 10 total, uh, okay. yeah, 10 total damage. Wisdom saving throw. Yeah, DC 17. Uh, that is a 14. He's, they're frightened of me. Of course they are. I was like, cool, you can't run. And I was gonna, I'm gonna do damage to the same guy. Yeah, all right. Uh, that is 10 points. Yeah, that's another 10 points. Oh, necrotic damage. You blast in it. Uh, it, it, the fear evaporates as the body evaporates. Uh, it's gone. No, his knees are gone. <laughs> it's, the whole body's gone. Oh, it's damn. a tiny little goblin. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Everything's gone. His knees um, are located right. everywhere. Top of the round, Kenneth, you're up with TBD on deck. Uh, his oh, knees let's are located go. everywhere. Yeah. Colgren right. sees the coach's back, and he's just like, Oh, my God! Yes! 
I'm trying to think that you just don't like Lucius. He's like coach. <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah. All right, we're gonna uh, we're gonna switch over bonus uh, action. Switch over that. that moment, uh, you're just destroying everything. That thing oh, yeah. that Absolutely. I did the last time. Uh huh. What did I, what's the, the name? The Slayer's of it? thing. That's the one. Uh-huh. Slayer's prey. The extra D6 thing and just transfer it over to another one. Um, mm-hmm. First one, 17 plus nine to hit. So yeah. That one will hit. Um, the, hit. the other one's a nat 19. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're a champion mm-hmm. fighter. Mm-hmm. Great you seem really bored about how well you're playing right now. No, I'm just trying, <laughs> to, I'm just trying to move it along. That's this is gr- great That's radio. Great radio, Michelle. <laughs> I no, shot the dead air with your sadness, um, Michelle. That's so idea. the first one is 12 points of damage. Uh huh. The second is nine points of damage. Yeah, I'll do it. Uh, okay. Yeah, two more shots. Another one, block a block. Another one gone. Block a block. Uh, another one extra, gone. extra bonus action. Will Scritch is the same because he's doing right. so good. Doing, doing just great, vibing. Sam. Yeah. Just vibing. All right, TBD, you're up. So I forgot with my new level six thing. I yeah. Have uh, attack of opportunity when they get within ten feet of me. Okay. Weren't we surrounded okay. at one point? You still are. There's still so two around. One is currently on the back of uh, Zeph, stabbing him violently, and another <laughs> one is at your feet. Uh, the f- one that you did not knock with your uh, pole arm, uh, and is still there. Still alive? Yep. Oh. So, ah, forget that. Um, <laughs> I'll try to uh, use my glaive again okay. on yeah. the one that's at my feet. Easy enough to do. Glove of wind. Glove it. That's a glove of wind. Wow, okay. I think that's a nap one. If it says one on it. <laughs> nap one? So that one True, fails. you're a real tool sometimes. Uh, yeah, so you swing. At, <laughs> as you like reel back to swing, the goblin looks at you and goes, it's, it says something to you, you can't hear it. Kenneth, you hear it go, She's gonna try it again! As it swings, it goes, and jumps underneath you, uh, and you nick uh, Zeph as he's like spinning around trying to bite uh, this little goblin for two damage. Mm. Uh, Sorry, still getting used to this. Make make an injured uh, uh, Velociraptor sound. I don't know what a Perlociraptor Perlociraptor is. Uh, Ah. <laughs> oh, that stings! Oh, you're getting stabbed. <laughs> you're getting stabbed while uh, like this cut my ankle. <sighs> if you let me use another dice and not use what I rolled on here for my second attack, do, are you roll with roll with your heart, man? Roll yeah, with your rolling, yeah. dude. There we go. Okay, uh, eighteen. Eighteen hits. Nice. Nothing else roll with the working. slow beat of your heart, dude. <laughs> uh, Too fast. Then... <laughs> Wait. Oh. Uh, 18 points of damage. 18 points of damage. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, you hit it. Uh, you, as it, you swing, it jumps over. Uh, you uh, hurt your poor friend. Uh, as it's laughing, you turn on the backswing and cleave its head from its shoulders. <laughs> as it goes... <laughs> and just kind of bubbles there for a moment. Yep. The and Then the body just rolls and... Just you ever play Shadow of War? It's like one of the... Yes. Just... <laughs> Yep. Uh, okay. Right job. And out of frustration for missing him so many times, I'm mm-hmm. going to use a bonus action to infuse the glaive with violence. I don't know, acid violence. Damage, I guess. It's already okay. use of violence, bro. I think that's it. How many oh, goblins are left? Like three? right. Unless I can uh, bonus two. Another two. Creature. There is one more on top of Zeph's back. Get him, Zeph. Okay. So I can bonus deck. <clears throat> you certainly can. Go oh, ahead and do yeah. so. Good to bonk. Did you use your stuff with something too? That way. Oh, that's, that's good. Oh wait, sorry. That would be a second bonus attack. Never mind. My one bonus. Oh, because you infused. Yep. Ignore that. Ignore it. Uh, okay. It's <laughs> a good roll though. <laughs> Alrighty then. Here we go. Uh, end of TBD's down. turn. It's now the two more goblins' turns. The goblins are going to do what goblins do in this situation, rally together and fight to the death. No! They're going to try to run away. The one that shot the arrow is the farthest away from any of you, so it's going to go ahead and take its full turn to get the 
hell out of there. So that's like 60 um, feet. 90 feet. It's going to, it's going to uh, dash. Do they have, like, do they have so 20, 20, do they, actually, do they have 25? Feet. Yeah, do they have 25 feet? Uh, they do have 25 feet, so, so 75 feet. 75 feet? Yeah. Okay, okay. Sorry. So you're, just... you're gauging. I know you are. I know what you're doing. Uh, <laughs> the other one is going to see it's uh, the Friendly. peril that it's in. Uh, for a moment, gets the brilliant idea to try to hit uh, on Zeph. Yeah. Zeph does nothing. It goes... Yeah, with a shot, hops down and <laughs> tries to run away, uh, giving giving both <clears throat> yeah giving both Zeph and Glyph uh, so, or Zeph and TBD uh, a text opportunity. Zeph just just puts his head his mouth down over just the try to and, okay yeah. yeah go ahead and roll your attack. Hey Matt, congrats! Uh, as a reptile, you also are now confused for Glyph. Welcome to the team. And um, I'm going to do it with advantage because it's pack tactics. You all look the yeah. same. 15, no, we don't. 15 hits. We really don't. And bite is this one's pro 2d6 yep. plus 3. Yep. Uh, 7. 7 total? 9, nine sorry. Nine, 9 points total? Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, so 9 points of damage. Uh, QD, you have to roll for an attack. Another nat one. Oh. I hit him again. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, this time you just buried into the ground next to it and have trouble getting it out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As it gets bit, uh, spinning away, its arm bleeding now from the bite uh, from Zeph as it begins to just like run as fast as it can. <laughs> as it runs uh, into the forest as fast as the legs can carry it. Um, oh, wait. Should I use the No. Gl- wait. There it is. Oh, it was your turn. I did not no, realize no, that I the goblins I, were... I, okay, yeah, it's your turn. Yes, turn. Sorry. Yes, yeah, Zeph, your turn. So, uh... Zeph, yeah, Zeph is just... <laughs> gonna, gonna, gonna st- stand there, like, licking his chops a little bit, like... Mm-hmm. And then see see the goblin has made it... How far? Uh, let's see. Jump down, run, dash. So, 50 feet. Yeah. Which is exactly my movement. Of course it is. Um, Philosophy. So, well, no, actually, I think it's 60, but still. I got a little. little You're fine. You hustle, so he's bro. just going to zip right up behind him. So where, whereas he kind of runs in a little bit of a serpentine uh-huh. pattern, you just this beeline thing. for him. Yep. Yeah, and then, you know, a nice big jump right yep. at the end, and then mm-hmm. claw attack as I land on him. Uh, of course. Go and roll your attack. Zeph's hungry. For blood. Boo. Uh, with advantage because it is uh, a scared little gro- uh, goblin, and I like you, this idea. Okay. That works for me, and that is a 12? 12 hits. Oh, good. Whew. Okay, you do not have a lot of armor. 2d8 plus 3. Oh, 5. Uh, five points of damage. Yeah, so you very easily uh, land on top of it after biting it and uh, end its poor little life. Nom, nom, nom. Oh, good. Uh, I'm nom, nom. T- take my last attack to um, D- devour it. Bite it. Yeah. Yeah, you bite, bite it. Bite off something. Yeah, you bite like it. Like an arm. Oh, bite yeah. it. Oh, okay. <clears throat> can the head fit down my gullet? Sure. Okay. Yeah. He does that. He just like sure. rips the head off and then, and then like, alligator, you know, talk, talk alligator style head. just yep. gets a, oh, oh, alligator oh, style just yep. lets it just roll down throws it back yep. you don't even chew it looks no, like, a, like no, an alligator does no. he bites it and just kind of throws it back yeah yeah I like that. My gut biome is very productive. Very Have nice. you ever watched Cliff and Zeph eat? Yeah. It's just a <laughs> lot of just how they eat. I, I, think, I, think, uh, I think Lucia spends most of his time actually just watching you two eat, because he doesn't need to. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. So he's like, he's uh, really interested. That okay. was the origin of why you stopped eating, was you were just like, <laughs> I'm actually not hungry anymore. I'm not good at it. Glyph, you are good. up. Uh, There's one goblin. Do you want to try to take the scalpel down or let him go? Oh, yeah, probably shoot him. Go ahead and roll your two attack. Oh, uh, that's a good one. Natural 20 on one and a 14 on the other. Yeah, both hit. Do that 20 first. So I'll go ahead and do these two D10s. That's uh, seven plus six, 13. 13 points of damage, yep. Plus another uh, 15. Isn't that some bitch? 28. Yeah, (laughs) how, how do you do this, man? Easily. Kneecaps. Uh, well, I mean, I <laughs> shoot him well, twice. Indeed. So, yeah, I mean, I try to uh, catch him in the right moment of his serpentine. Yep. So as to <laughs> shoot the outside of one kneecap going <laughs> through and hitting the inside of the <laughs> other. Oh. And as he goes to knee, uh-huh. uh, I try to go ear to ear. Ooh, oh. Easily enough. So, uh, yeah. It's... Easily. No, there was nothing easily about for that. For Glyph? Uh, yes. For That's you? Fair. Yeah. Fair. Nothing you, but he works. It just really takes hard. a moment nothing of just. <laughs> 
knees. <laughs> Fire the first shot. It hits, stumbles, falls to the ground slowly, like brings itself back up. Oh, dude, Second shot slipping. rings out. Body drops. <laughs> And a quiet falls over the oh gosh, the field. Yeah. I can as, be a sniper. I can hold my breath for fifteen minutes. Uh, all of you. Oh yeah, you'd be great. As all of you, um, Cliff needs a sniper. Uh, bring this little skirmish to an end. Are we supposed to do that? Yeah, hi. Uh, I don't know. I'm really I, wondering about the repercussions that that's gonna have. Guys, guys, guys. Guess what? I'm gonna. We, we go are to breaking points. the memory. Hooray! It, was it, I don't think it'd be there. You turned to a Velociraptor. Yeah. Are you still a Velociraptor? Yeah. Oh. Ah. Uh, I have five the Velociraptor now. Hey, I assume that Zef, because Zef can telepathy, I assume he just talks to yeah, the animal. Okay, I dab him up, in, I dab him up in like Velociraptor. Man, campaign yeah. three, Drew really did break the game. Mm-hmm. He's chilling. Oh, can't be a creature that flies? Cool, I'll use my pearlescent wings. There's a yeah. thing that you can do with this combo that... I think we're gonna have to decide that I can't do because it's so game breaks. So, so you told, so you told us. Uh, I don't think you would. Hey, Michelle, did. So Kenneth told us um, that he could you heard say, nope. the <laughs> goblins saying that they're gonna. That, mm-hmm. You didn't yeah. do that. Cool. Uh, All right. the times you tried. So the dragon's the not coming, right? And it had been cheating, probably. Like I think him as, saying you break the game for real is refreshing. As you guys are kind of uh, taking this moment to take a breath and realize kind of the interaction you had. Um, <laughs> There is a moment where uh, everything. Uh, there's a moment where a sound breaks out. Uh, you don't need a high perception to feel it, and it feels like the air around you crackles for a oh moment boy. in this deep <laughs> around the world uh, in in the world around you. Um, you can see the uh, the castle itself uh, almost with <clears throat> a strange like wiping of your vision goes from being uh, the way it looks in front of you now to changing ever so slightly to where now you can see uh, one of the towers has collapsed and there seems to be a fire emanating from one side but there's this black smoke roiling up uh, above it then this dark cloud kind of gathering up in the sky where the smoke's coming from Um, and as that happens you hear this slight little cackle from the little creature on the tree as it watches you all with its bright yellow eyes. Um, as you're kind of considering what that all means, you hear the sound of panting and footfalls. Uh, as you can see, uh, slightly singed and a little uh, sooty, uh, the six adventurers come stumbling up the hill, uh, dragging behind them what appears to be a uh, older gentleman with what looks to be these, these this fine... Uh, cloak uh, that is now completely like burned. Part of it is just like smoking. His thin little mustache is now like smoking on at the ends very comically. <laughs> um, as they all drag themselves up and throw themselves uh, on the valley in front of you guys and just all start breathing just very <sighs> and a hush kind of falls and then you hear the dwarf just That was fucking brilliant! And they all just start, like, slowly just start laughing, and the whole group just starts cackling and laughing uh, at something that must have uh, hilariously happened uh, in that encounter. Uh, But you can see they all kind of stand up, uh, and the dwarf goes, Well, probably should apply some salve to the poor nobleman here. He got burnt a bit too much as he uh, grabs the poor gentleman and begins to like pull him towards a tree and you can hear the poor gentleman just like <laughs> as he gets pulled away. Uh, the other uh, individual all standing up and kind of slapping each other moving towards the tree line. Uh, you can see as this happens uh, uh, the dragonborn uh, Rogar kind of rolls to his feet and kind of like reaches down uh, a hand and picks up uh, Eliander's who is uh, face down in the uh, the grass and kind of picks him up and he kind of drops for a second and come on and he tries to pick up he's like that was not nearly what I thought we were going to do when we said quietly <laughs> uh, as the Rogar laughs and kind of pulls him over to uh, some stone that kind of sets him down, begins to uh, dust off some of the soot and ash that is just covering uh, Eliandris as he just kind of sits there wide-eyed, just kind of staring. Um, 
you can hear uh, the other individuals are beginning to. Uh, you can see the dwarf is beginning to pull out some uh, a kit of some kind of means to apply a salve to the poor nobleman. Um, the other ones beginning to sit down, pull out uh, bags and containers, being to uh, drink and pass around canteens. Um, as uh, Rogar and uh, Eliandris kind of sit over here. And uh, as you guys are watching, it's at this point you can feel the world kind of fades a little bit in its vi- uh, vibrancy. Um, and you can see like the effects of what you guys did is clearly around. The, the corpses of the goblins are still here, although not as fresh as they were before. Um, however, y- evidence of you standing here is no longer uh, visible. Um, however, you the conversation between uh, Rogar and uh, Eleanor just continues as you hear Rogar go, uh, It was really good. I know you're still learning the art of the magic, but you did well. Uh, that protection spell probably saved Ten Stride's life. <laughs> well, it wouldn't have to if he just stuck to the plan. This is true. This is true. Uh, as they kind of sit back. Oh, so, what did you think of your first grand adventure, Eliandris? Uh, to tell you the truth, I was, uh, not nearly as prepared as the books have taught me to be, but, uh, given time, I feel like we could, <laughs> could do quite, uh, quite the damage out here. Uh, what do you think, Roga? Yes. Uh, about that. I know that we were talking about uh, making this a bit of an em- enterprise, or, you know, doing this on a more formal basis, you know. With all the all the things we've done here and in the lands beyond, it would be good to make this a professional trade. But uh, yeah, you know, I I have to go. Uh, Strathmore has asked me to step in, and I have to oblige. And you see, uh, Andres gets kind of quiet and kind of lowers his head. I see. It's a, Rogar kind of puts a hand down. It's, it's not because I don't want to. No, I understand. You, uh... <laughs> your whole family has been uh, guildmasters for many years. It's only natural that you follow in their stead. This is not to say that we can't... find more things to do as a group. Uh, uh, we're family, you know that. I do. Uh, you, you all have been the family I have never known. Uh, don't, don't mind me, Rogo. I'm just. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to miss you. The group. I'm going to miss the group. Uh, I haven't had a family to call my own in many years. So, the adventures we've had together, few that they are, have been uh, wonderful to me, to all of us. I'm sure. Rogar kind of nods. What will you do now? Oh, you know, I'm just kind of... Well, I hear the Emerald Vale has some uh, masters of the arcane that I could potentially uh, uh, learn a thing or two under. I feel like I should pursue that. Yes, that would be good for me. For all of us. It'd be best. You, you see them kind of... Elion just kind of gets very quiet. Rogo, I, I don't know what I'm going to do without all of you. My life has been a world of wander and nothing. You have all given me a purpose that I could have never found on my own. And you see the dragonborn kind of straightens up at this point, dusting off their robes, kind of uh, pulling at the sleeve, which is now severely burned and kind of like tearing off a piece of fabric as it kind of like comes apart from the, the burns and puts a hand on uh Eliandris' shoulder one more time and just kind of sits there for a moment in quiet and then says 
Sometimes, Eliandrus, we have to go it alone for a time to find what we truly seek. And who knows, my friend, perhaps fate will bring us back together one day. His hand slowly leaves the shoulder of Eliandrus and he begins to make his way towards the rest of the group as they're setting up what looks to be a small campsite for the night. You see Eliandrus kind of sits there on the stone by himself and just stares at the group. Uh, Lucius, you're the only one who can see it from this perspective because you're kind of facing his side. Uh, And it could be just the ashen just kind of soot covering his face, but there is a small streak of a tear as he looks fondly upon these people. Uh, Lucius can't uh, physically interact, I assume, but Lucius tries to comfort him, like put arm around him or something. Or... And while you can't interact with him, you uh, the intent is, is there. Um, as you guys kind of watch the scene, you begin to notice the world around you begins to dim, the edges kind of slowly creeping into your vision. The cracks beginning to appear again in the vision, the the muddiness, the milkiness beginning to appear again. As you feel your body slowly begin to evaporate back into the dark gray sea. Right before that happens, I would like uh, a couple of you, if you would like to, to make a perception check for me. Can I yeah. yeah, whoever would like. You, I will I will throw it out to a few of you. G- give you guys some moderation. Um, who does what? Perception. I roll pretty well. I don't oh, know yeah, if I want to go for higher. Do you want to roll? Yeah, go for it. Perception. Plus six. Six. I, have a, I have a dirty 20. A dirty 20? Okay. 17. 17. 19. 19. Uh, all of you without issue. You notice the dark cloud of the smoke that's roiling above the castle. Uh begins to, you swear for a moment, the shape of some sort of face turns and wa- attracts you as your bodies leave this vision. And the rumble kind of grows in the corners of your mind as your bodies pull back out into the deep gray ocean. As you kind of float there for a little bit uh, more time, you see more images float by, more cracked visions float past. Time continues to just flex and flow around you for a while. You hear another voice enter all of your minds simultaneously, uh, and it says, To break a memory, you must first fix it. And as that happens, you can see another image begins to float towards you, and you feel your essence being drawn towards it. Uh, as all of you get to this cracked image, your minds begin to focus it and draw into it closer and closer until your bodies, once again, this strange kind of misty version of yourself appears in a room. A warm room, the crackle of a fire uh, glowing next to you, yet unfelt by you. Uh, It is a simple room filled with what looks to be a a writing desk and a small bed, uh, stone masonry, uh, walls and a ceiling, uh, a small, uh, simple rug stretched across the floor. Not uh, pauper by any means, but uh, simple. Uh, You seem to be in some sort of a large uh, castle or building of some kind, just given the, the design of this room. Um... As you look around, you begin to notice there are a couple of shelves uh, resting against the walls filled with tomes and scrolls kind of haphazardly thrown in there. You can see there's one scroll drawn across one side of the wall with uh, nails stuck into it, into uh, pieces of wood that support uh, the stonework. You can see drawings and sketches across it uh, creating different uh, arcane uh, ideas and thoughts. You can see tomes uh, splayed out on the bed, on the floor, on the writing table. Um, Scrolls laid out with half-written ideas and thoughts kind of strewn about there. Uh, A bit chaotic, but 
definitely the room of somebody who's been working hard. And as you kind of float there for a moment, just kind of absorbing this strange kind of fuzzy memory, you hear the sound of the door open, the metal lock clanging, uh, and you see an individual storm into uh, the room. And at this point, you hear the crash and rumble of uh, a storm outside as rain is now beginning to patter uh, out. And you can see uh, a window uh, behind this person as they open the door, leaving it open uh, into another room. It looks to be a little bit of a large room with more shelves and more books. Um, a window lead, stretches out into a dark uh, jungle that stretches out uh, below this building with rain cascading down, the hard rain that just probably goes on for a while. As this individual storms into the room, you can see them wearing simple uh, gray and white uh, robes of um, looks to be a scholar or uh, an accolade of some kind, or an acolyte of some kind. Um, a little bit older, uh, features finer, ears a little pointier, hair still tied up in that messy kind of bun on the top of their head. Uh, Eliandris, as they storm into the room and kind of fling a tome onto the writing table, kind of sending uh, paper scattering, they slam uh, his hands onto the table and just kind of breathe for a second. It's all right. It's all right. They'll see. They'll come around. Give them time. As you hear uh, on the door, you see them spin around and enter. You can see opening the door. Uh, another individual, much older, more hunched humanoid, uh, a small white cap set on their balding head, uh, their uh, jowls kind of dangling a little bit as they hold up an old oily lantern, uh, kind of like steps into the room and looks up. Very much older gentleman, but uh, wearing the same kind of white and uh, gray robes, uh, but these robes have a long kind of like chain that is attached to them with a, a amulet kind of hanging from it. Uh, you see Eliandris kind of nods. Uh, Grand Maester, what can I do for you? And you see the, the old guy, the old wizard kind of walks in and sets the lamp down and sets down on a uh, uh, stool next to the writing table. It was quite the entertainment tonight. <laughs> I have never seen the council so riled up at the thoughts of the young student. Now the owners kind of nods their head sheepishly. I'm sorry, Grandmaster. I, I did not. Uh, did not mean to offend the council. In my, it's all right. It's all right. They are. They are skilled and learned in what they know, but strangely ignorant to the things they do not know. At this point, Elian just kind of steps forward and kind of gets a little bit lower to kind of make eye contact with uh, the Grandmaster. So you believe me? You believe that this this uh, this ritual could could do uh, what I what I think it should. I mean, yes, we'd have to test it. We'd have to we'd have to create some sort of and is immediately cut off by a slight hand raise of the Grand Master. Hey, Anders, tell me, what do you think separates an old wizard from a young wizard? I, I, I don't know, uh, Grand Mesa. I, I would assume skill, uh, uh, power, uh, experience. Uh, hand comes up again. Caution. A wizard only reaches an old age when caution is the first of their virtues. Anyone can create magic fabricated to their will but it's the young and reckless who enact on these without caution and their stories end abruptly it is the cautious ones who live long enough to see their work fulfilled I know your your concepts of time stretch much farther than those of my race. But you must understand, young Ferai, caution will keep you alive. It is ambition 
untempered by time, that will bring about anyone's ruin. And you see Elian just kind of bows their head. Yes, God may stand. I'm sorry for being over eager. Don't, don't be apologetic, young lad. I wish more wizards of our time as they slowly get up from the chair and kind of grunt as they do. I wish more wizards of our time had the same ambition and tenacity as you. I feel with ten more people like you, this world could be a much better place. You get some rest. <clears throat> Take some time. Perhaps we can talk more of this later. Thank you, uh, Grandmaster. I would much appreciate that. You see, the old man nods. Good night. Fair eye. He turns and slowly kind of hobbles out of the room. Closing the door, locking it. it shuts behind him with a clang. You see, Eliandris kind of looks at the papers, looks at the tome. You see them, you see he sits down on the bed and begins to like slowly just kind of like relax and kind of seems to take in what he was saying. Before sitting down, he pulls a scroll off of the bed and kind of rolls it up and sets it on the table, grabs a tome and goes to close it and then stops, stares at it for a moment. Slams it shut, sets it down. Gets up and begins to arrange some of the papers on his table. Uh, and as he does, you notice a small scrap of paper set into uh, a metal frame. And you watch as he grabs it and picks it up and begins to look at it. And you can see it's an arcane imprint uh, drawn very realistically, uh, almost have done by uh, a master artist, but uh, done with magic, a very simple spell. But you can see drawn across it is a picture of what looks to be about uh, six or seven individuals all kind of gathered around a table uh, holding mugs or bowls of food and kind of uh, looking in the direction of the picture uh, with these like half uh, these half smiles and like kind of like uh, some of them a little inebriated and as he stares at it from what you can see the images begin to slowly move as if caught in a small time capsule you can see it looks to be uh, an interaction at a tavern the six of the adventurers that you saw in the vision before uh, laughing at a joke that the tabaxi is telling and the dwarf seems very put out by whatever joke is being told but everyone's having a great time you can see uh, ale is being served food is being served uh, you can swear you almost hear the faint sound of the music playing behind it but it plays for a few seconds and then stops and then resets to its original thing and after a few more seconds replays that same few seconds of imagery and you can see Eleandris just kind of looks at it for a while and then sets it down You see, looks out the window at the rain. I don't know if you can hear me. I have not heard anything from the mainland since... since the incident. I've heard stories. Terrible uh, calamities, uh, the hand of the gods on our world. I don't care about any of that. I just hope you're safe. And I promise you, once I solve this, I'm coming to find you. You see, he looks at the image one more time before setting himself scooping up a book and a couple of scrolls turning and walking out the door closing it with a determined clank can I can I follow them at all uh, you feel unable to really move from this you feel like your vision is still kind of set in here uh, this one feels less uh, corporeal bef as it did before uh, like you can't really insert yourself into the world right now. But you can still see and perceive everything around you. Um, but this is where 
you stay for the time being. Uh, can we look at the um, can we look at the desk? Sure, absolutely. Um, looking at the desk, you can see there is uh, many tomes and scrolls kind of scattered about it. There is the excuse me, behind it there is the long kind of uh, strip of paper that is tacked to the wall with the drawings and sketches across it. Um, go ahead and make a arcana check as you kind of look over this whole area. I did but- <laughs> uh, I'm not good at that. You yeah. got this, Preston. Guide it's yourself. Like a, can I guide myself? Yes, you may. That oh, is something sweet. you can do. There you Plus go. zero to this roll, so it's going to be raw, cool power. Yeah. I, I believe and it's going to be so impressive when it's a natural 20. Yeah. It's like... Natural 18. <laughs> Real close. Holy shit. 22. 23. 23? Nice. Mm-hmm. With a 23, you can see there appears to be a drawing of some sort of design, uh, some sort of device that is being built and the very beginnings of a ritual spell that wants to do something with this device to channel something uh, for one reason or another. It's hard to tell. Again, this is all just kind of preliminary (laughs) designs and sketches and even with the 23 you can tell that this is this is the beginning idea of a concept uh, and you don't really know exactly what path they're trying to take. You understand what you understand what you're looking at and it makes some sense, but you feel as though there's a lot of incomplete information uh, on this paper as if there's a lot of gaps missing in order to make this make sense. If that if that is understandable. Hey, um, Glyph, can you come over here and use your beautiful brain of yours? I mean, at any moment, I probably could. You need me to use my intelligence to try and suss something? Yeah, see if you can fill in the blanks here. Okay. Yep. Let's see. I guide him. Mm-hmm. Good say. It is still rolling when you said that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I said it. 14. It's just straight intelligence or something else? This is our kind check. Oh, 21. 21? Yeah. Uh, with uh, looking over it as well, you can see it appears to be that he's trying to create a spell and simultaneously build an object. Uh, something that seems to be... Uh, and the sketch looks very simple. It looks to be a large uh, <clears throat> metal sphere that they want to design in this drawing with it looks to be about... Uh, three concentric rings around it uh, of varying materials, and uh, one of only one of them makes sense. It's it says uh, refined deep iron uh, with a question mark. The other two are just question marks, as if they don't know what uh, materials to use. Uh, there appear to be two stalks that protrude from either side of the sphere, with smaller orbs and concentric rings around them. Again, three rings on each one, with the same kind of uh, abbreviated handwriting on it to uh, indicate. Uh, unknowns on two of them and refined deep iron on uh, the middle one. Um, the spell that they're trying to do seems to be some sort of a cross between a transmutation and an evocation with a little bit of a conjuration idea behind it. Um, but still in the very early stages of whatever it's trying to be. And again, a lot of incomplete information here and you're not really sure what the goal is not with just what you see on the paper here. It seems a little, uh, little wonky, mate. Looks like he's trying to figure something out, but if I had to guess, he's probably still a ways off. So he's like, there's a lot of missing pieces here. Is there any thing um, regarding potential materials, like in the other extra papers on the actual desk? That will require an investigation, investigation check. check. Uh, would um, you, you can do it, or you can have someone else help you do it. do it. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Do you think you could correct? You, you want to try investigate? I'm gonna guide you. I'm just gonna spam. That. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, spam no, guidance. The... <laughs> um, plus three. Yeah, plus three. Plus, uh, Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, not finding a whole lot. A, a bit of stuff here and there, but you feel like you, a lot of this is unknown to you, and you're not really sure what you're looking for. Uh, and it feels like you didn't. Uh, feels like you didn't roll high enough. To, <laughs> not really. Yeah, it uh, feels like I'm. All right, eyes are glyph, just, glyph, beautiful mind again. Come over okay, here. Okay, you feel like I'm just being used for my brain, but it's actually refreshing. Uh, no, way worse than her. Can I give you my inspiration from two weeks ago? No. Damn it. That's yours. I use it. <laughs> nah, I rolled bad. <laughs> the second time. No, now with Preston and I take back look. the thing I wasn't allowed to do. <laughs> uh, let me. 
All right, let's just let's look around the room then, real quick. Is there any like interesting books that I can like glean from the bookcase? Um, sure. Uh, you find uh, a couple of different ones, uh, two in particular. One of them seems to be a book on the magical properties of uh, natural materials. Okay, that's, and that's good. Uh, the other one seems to be a, a simple book on uh, the the basics and concepts of uh, conjuration, different magic, the conjuration magic. Great. We need. We got. I think. I assume that we have transmutation covered. With deep iron, or something like that, so maybe uh, we can we can tackle the evocation and conjuration aspects of uh, that spell. This is way out of my depth, but I don't know. Can can I? Uh, can we at least? I have a question. What's up? We know his calculations are wrong, right? So why don't we just change something random and hope that it fixes everything? That's quite a large shot in the dark. I mean, you're right. they're they're no, incomplete. That doesn't mean they're wrong. Though. Yeah, he has all the pieces. He doesn't have all the pieces yet, but he he has a good structure. Could you give him guidance? I was gonna do that, Could but then he left the room. The I'm not sure he's gonna come back with his weird timey wimey shit stuff. Oh, but yeah, can I, can I pull out those books? Yeah, you have the. You can. Yeah, you can. Okay, cool. I'm gonna pull out those books and I'm gonna start. Uh, I'm gonna give him to give someone else like the. Got it. Someone else something, and I'm gonna go skim through the book on my own. Uh, I'll give you the the basics. Was it basic conservation and uh, powerful materials? Uh, right? m- m- uh, natural materials and their magical properties, and the basic uh, just a book which on one, conservation. Yeah, conservation. <sighs> I'll take the conservation one. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna start looking for doggies. Uh, make a investigation check as you're looking through that. Natural 20. Woo! Plus 4. 24. <laughs> Jack Bauer. <laughs> Alright, okay for some. <laughs> oh no, Matt, you're developing lockjaw. <laughs> um, so you rolled an natural 20, and are you uh, looking through yours? Yeah, yeah, look through yeah, through yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Go ahead investigation? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 14. 14 total? I didn't guide myself. 14. Do you want to guide yourself? 16. 16. Well, not bad. Um, looking through both of these books, you can begin to gain a little bit of information. Uh, not much to go off of. You can yeah. kind of tell the conjuration that he's trying <clears throat> to implement seems to be something along the lines of... Mm, I want to give it to you, but 16 is not... It's just, it's just not he read, he read the conjuration there. one. I read the, oh, you read the material I read one. the materials one. He took oh, the yeah, you, one. yeah you, you just kind of understand that like some materials are more magically uh, potent than others, and that you know using different ones in different combinations can create uh, different effects, and that there's just a lot of just like knowledge, like, a lot of unknowns when it comes to materials at this point. Um, you read it with a nat 20 on conjuration, you understand something that not even Eliandris has postulated yet. Based on the essence of conjuration and a vague idea of what he's trying to do based on kind of his notes in the margins of this book, it seems as though he's trying to call up something, like he's trying to create something and pull it into this world. The devil. Uh... But what you begin to understand far beyond that is that instead of pulling something out of one place and into this one, what you could very easily do is just open the way for it to come by itself instead of pulling the thing like... Almost like pulling something through water. There's a lot of drag and a lot of force behind it. Whereas you could just... Open a door. Open the water. Right. Instead of trying wa- to pull something through the bottom crack of a door, you could just open the door. Very, a very, yeah. <laughs> Instead of having to use all that force to pull it through, open the way for it to come itself. Yeah, you let it rush um, in. Yeah. And so, that rush here. yeah, and no so way. basically, with, with that knowledge, you kind of begin to see that there's a couple of changes that could be made to his sketching. 
uh, to help simplify and kind of refine what he's done there. Oh, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that, and I'll try to match his handwriting as okay. best as I can. So you begin to kind of fiddle with that and do that. Yeah, easily enough. Um, so now there's a middle one. we got conjuration cover. Evocation. Powerful, powerful, powerful materials. I mean, like, I know... I know this is weird, but, like, uh... I don't know. Uh, you know, there's, like, the ruby thing about me, you know, like... So maybe, like... Maybe, I don't know. Maybe you're the material? I know I'm not the material. I, was, I, was even, I don't even know my great-great-grandparents existed yet. That's true. Fair I don't know if he could have been, like, a thousand years old. Um... Uh, I have. I mean, one could conjecture and all that. Oh, uh, one could conjecture? One could conjecture. <laughs> <laughs> Explain this a little oh, bit yes. more to me. So there, <laughs> there is word. <laughs> uh arcane <laughs> formula, basically, that is present. Like, is. Oh, and we are tweaking it to make sure it works, basically. So far, he, he figured out the breakthrough for the conjuration aspect of it. And they understand the deep uh, iron material components. And Kenneth believes you have to conjecture your VHS tape before you return it to Blockbuster. Did you say deep iron? Yeah. You know another another name for that is black steel. Yeah. What? what? Come on, mate. Yeah, I'm watching your brain work. It's a beautiful thing. Dude, I have 11 intelligence. I'm not. Oh God. I'm not smart. Cocked. That's why I have friends here. That's why I surround myself with intelligent people. I mean, you could just... I think you don't have to limit yourself to an 11 intelligence. I think should get a chance to, like, just listening deeply to his friends use yeah. his insight to I, try to fill in the pieces. I am welcoming hunting. any yeah, and all group efforts here. We are... Uh, 19? 19. Like, I'm listening... You... You understand that... Yes, there is uh, there is a drawing in there about refining deep iron, which connects to you reading that deep iron is a catalyst for magic. But there's also the thing about Fulgrim and the Dwarves, who are the designers and creators of the refined version of deep iron known as Black Steel, which Black Steel. you haven't interacted much with in your life, but you all have learned in... Very various avenues of life, especially the Draconians. Black steel is a highly sought-after material, also extremely magical. What he's trying to say is that black iron can be turned into deep steel. You mm-hmm. switched it. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I understand the concept, not the words. Yeah, no, I get you. I get you. I totally well, he's saying, maybe use the good stuff, not the bad stuff. All right, right cool. So we so we also read the, it includes the refined version of deep iron, which is black steel. Right? Do you know yep. roughly how that comes about? Like the refinement process? Maybe we could leave them a little. Yeah, do you know? Do you know, you're going to drop your dwarven secrets like that? Wow. Roll, roll to see what I know. Uh, I will oh, say. Sure, really. Give me a second. I want to look at both. <laughs> it's just like a dwarf thing. Like on your thirteenth birthday, you just like. Oh, I know about black steel. Yeah, that's what. That's what no, I feel like words. I wrote this down somewhere. Um. Just to update Matt. Matt's previous uh, Nat one frenzy was a seven. Oh, it's really hard to read. It has, it has a fleck. The seven is printed on a fleck of gold leaf, and for it makes it impossible. Just the way that it's patterned, it looks like a one. May I see it? I'm just curious. He, and all this time he's wondering how he had two net ones on his dime. Uh, this hit, one was a one. Fulgrim, let me ask you this because I don't see it in my notes anywhere, and I feel like oh this gosh. is something that you. I feel like your character needs to have a firm grasp on. Is the concept of black steel kept secret from the dwarves, or do all dwarves understand how to make it? The way I always felt it was... It 
it was passed down to certain dwarves. Not old. Not it wasn't common knowledge to all dwarves. Okay, because I know there's so there's one place that makes it. There's only one place. That it's, so the rune the runesmith forge is the only place that creates black steel because it has the proper place to do it. But if you, and I feel like. Um, I don't know. Like, you'd have to be some sort of master smith, essentially. There were the, there were the four that. master smiths. That's, that is true. That is true. So if that is the case, uh, based on my notes Matt. here. He's like, this, Actually, this is no. about story. Yeah. The, no. Uh, so I would say, if that is the case, mm-hmm. if you believe that it is passed down, then you would be because the fourth master smith who made the hammer was Thulgrin Hammerlord. So that would be your many, many greats uh, ancestor. So yes, I would say given that understanding and based on you agreeing that it is passed down to certain lines of dwarves, that your your line is one that knows how to refine deep iron into black steel. So well, and I will say, friend, if it's a if it's a matter of keeping it a secret, maybe we could just hand over the, the names of those who know how to make it. Maybe he can do the rest. Tell him where to find it. Yeah. That's yeah. If you don't want to give up the secret. Mm. Or not. I'm really not sure why we're help, helping him fix his spell. I mean, <laughs> I mean, honestly, well, if you, because helping him fix his spell helps me, helps, helps me help him. Okay. Mm. I'm just going to, I'm going to take your word for it. I don't care, right? I mean, that's why I'm I mean, in, I don't care about now. the outcome. It's up to you. I don't want to pour pressure you or anything but I know that I'm not sure because the thing is it's a very sought after thing yeah we don't really share a ton it, it, it's kept very close to the armor yeah mm-hmm. could I so that not it not just everybody can get their hands on it they might be able to get themselves onto uh to well, deep iron, but not necessarily change it into black steel. The thing is, right, is that from what I'm gathering from the situation is that Eleandres is trying is on the on the brink of something big, of something very important, and something that they believe can help with the incident, which I am assuming is the God Scar. So. If this is some weird timey wimey thing or just learning something, I th- I believe that you doing this can go a long way. And also, in a weird way, the problem will take care of itself because the guy that you would be helping giving the secret will be immediately dead afterwards. If that helps you. I understand it's a big thing to ask, but I, I, I don't know what else to do. So, and this isn't something that we're we're altering any sort of time. I don't thing. think so. It's, we just have he to. He said fix. it's a memory. It's a memory. I don't think it's that, but understand. Uh, we're also uh, all this process has been kind of brought to us by three witches that if I'm being honest I don't <laughs> exactly trust very well we're so in... I don't necessarily well, it might seem like we're that's valid. in a bit of a memory are we 100% sure that's what this is I mean to be honest with you I've never done any of this before I, well, I haven't did, either they have done dealings at least with one of the dwarves in the forge so maybe we could just say this city this forge, black steel. That's it. I mean, that would get big giveaway. No real secrets as to a recipe. The witches already know where and what they've dealt with the dwarves before. Evidently, maybe we could just give him a hint as to uh, what will be the right path to go on, and let him take care of the rest. Here's a question: mm-hmm. the dwarf in all this. Mm. Uh, That's you. Was he? Uh, well-known dwarf that might 
I guess my thing is is would I potentially know much about his character? Which dwarf are you referring to? Uh, the one in this in memory. Thorgrin uh, uh, Thorgrin uh, no, uh, the dwarf, uh, the dwarf that was in the party that he was with. Yes. Um, make a history check for me. That was a good spin. Very nice. Wow. It sounded like, uh, I was like, what is that sound? And then it cut it. was very good. It's a D20. That was a good one. It was a four. It wasn't good. Eight? It was beautiful. That's because it wasn't in the You don't remember his name, but given that, I'll throw you a bone here, given that Press, given that Lucius, sorry, mm-hmm. breaking the game here. Mm-hmm. Given that Lucius indicated that this could potentially be this calamity they were saying could potentially be what is the God Scar, you would assume this character could have been one of the uh, what's known as the um, the Brave One Hundred, which was uh, in your time in your lifetime uh, a memorial to about a hundred named dwarves who were never recovered after the calamity known as the Godscar uh, occurred a thousand years ago. So, no help whatsoever. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, yeah, you're old eight, dude. Sorry. Uh, it doesn't really, I can't really... I will say this. Any, like, I, I will say this. It is up to Thulgren whether or not he wants to share that secret. It does not, out, out of game... It does not destroy my story if you pick one way or another. I don't want you to be like, I don't want to make the wrong choice. There is no wrong choice. What does your character want to do? It's a role playing, role playing world we're in right now. So, what? It's not for you. Yeah. We're inside a game. <laughs> All right. That's a different uh, story arc. If you die in here, you die. I'm gonna go out on a limb here. This is a real life. And I'll do it just because, from what I've seen, at least in these memories, it seems like that dwarf was honorable and trusted this lad. So I think I'm gonna trust in it too and try to help. All right. So, Thilgren provides the concepts and instructions for the refining of deep iron. Um, I need Constitution saving I need Yeah, I need one more uh, Arcana roll from whoever chooses to do so. Uh, I will I will provide you with advantage on the roll because this is now a group of people trying to create a final thing. I just need to play a bard at this point. Uh, 22. 22. 22. You finish writing on the schematic, and as you do so, uh, finish his idea with a much more refined design. Whereas he was using uh, a variety of materials, uh, you narrow it down to three basic materials. Uh, jade on one ring, black uh, black steel on the center ring, and the final ring, uh, gold. Uh, on all of the concentric rings on this orb, you refine the spell to not cause uh, too much pull on the caster as they try to conjure something into this reality, but more opening the gateway for this. You refine the idea to create a catalyst for something to come into this world that is easily contained, uh, and able to uh, manipulate once it's in this world, whereas pulling something out of this world and just kind of having it appear is uh, quite chaotic. With all that being said, you create a much more safe and defined variation of what Eliandros was trying to do. And as that happens, uh, without need for a perception check, uh, as you kind of step back and look at this, you see the paper has got all the writing on it. You hear... Oh no. As the world cracks again. Uh, and at this point, you can see outside 
the thunder clouds are rumbling and rolling. The, the sky is still dark with the downpour of rain. But up in the clouds, much more defined, you can see the face that saw you as you left the first memory. Um, as you guys look out, you can see that it is now beginning to slowly, like, leer towards your direction. Uh, The eyes kind of flashing, the thunder kind of electrocuting across its features as it rolls forward. Does anyone remember the scary smoke creature from James and the Giant Peach? Yeah, yeah. That's that's exactly what it is. Uh, That's what you see. Rhino. That without without a rhino face, but that vibe of a of a strange kind of monstrous creature. As it rolls, you hear the sound of a little cackle. And you all can see that there is the picture on the table, uh, still black and white with the with the parch- black ink on on you know yellowish parchment. But you can see one of the t- uh, patrons in the tavern behind the group has bright yellow eyes as it looks at you through the picture, and you can hear the voice. Very good. However, in the mind of an individual, sometimes our actions don't go unnoticed. As you can see, the face in the sky begins to leer closer and closer. Um, still always off, but definitely like looking like it's trying to move towards you slowly. Yeah. As that happens, the door opens up and you can see Eliandros kind of steps in and sets the books down and kind of rubs the sleep out of their eyes and sets down uh, on his bed and looks up at the drawing again and slowly kind of tilts his head to one side before jumping up out of the bed and like rushing over and like looking at it frantically before realizing <laughs> and a, a, a tired smile spreads across his face Bye, and as the vision begins to fade you could hear him go it could work as the vision muddies and fades away and you find yourself once again floating in the dark gray sea but this time There's a strange feeling that you're not the only thing out here. Mm. And that is where we'll leave ourselves tonight. Picking up next time as we continue in this strange mind world with now the realization that you may have alerted something in here to your presence. Great. (laughs) Someone triggered the subconscious. Ooh. All right. Well, good job tonight, guys. Well done. Here I am go. excited to see where we can go after this. I'm uh, just, you are, Calvin. Oh, I'm just dreading the aftermath. You're oh, doing, if you you're die in the shadow world, you die for real. No, no, that That's was just uh, that was just uh, mitts in the other I game. Can't We're wait. not going to see how all oh, those things. Oh, it's gonna be great. Exclusively, uh, but we'll just. we'll wait and see. Yeah, uh, what happens. Exactly. Wow. Uh, but until next time, thank you guys so much for playing. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll see you guys next time on the Godstar Chronicles. Good night, everybody. <laughs>
Question. What's I the, said it's my older okay. sister, not my old sister. How old are you? Are you let's let's it? talk about this. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's talk about it. Wait, now that I'm in the hold, I am. You're <laughs> 32. <laughs> That's like rude. 12. That's 32 <laughs> rific. You're too much, dude. Well, what, what, 30 I'm too much? Ha <laughs> <laughs> oh, ha! I spent, I spent three years go. being 29. I like that. I don't know who that is, but I like that. Oh my gosh, my sister should be a guest on D&D &D one I'd, week. You, I'd be down for I it. I have no idea what I'm talking about, but I would do it. Just go on your Damn. just go on your Game of Thrones <laughs> monologue in the middle of the show. OMG, but have you watched the new episode? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, still an episode behind. I heard people uh, couldn't watch it because it was uh, like lit by candlelight. I have light. no one to talk about this yeah. with. You're an episode behind, Jake's an episode behind, I'm an island. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friend Matt said that people couldn't see it very well because the lighting was so poor. Ooh, which but part? It sounds like he just oh, read that oh, somewhere, though. Yeah, it didn't I sound didn't like he it. really knew sure, what was up. Sure. I saw a lot of people complaining about the it. The part where they're walking on the beach, because that was... Whoa, that spoilers! Was oh, there's a... Great! Why, there's beaches in Westeros? Hang up on her. She's spoiling. What the hell? Not even a spoiler. They're walking on the beach. You don't even know who they are. We, you knew that. Oh, we it's going to be their pronouns for all we know. Okay. <laughs> you know, George R.R. Martin wouldn't do that. That's right. Her pronouns are they, them. So, boom, bitches. Never <laughs> mind. Heather can cut a promo. <laughs> I think I could. Yeah. Well, it's basically like. I will verbally assault someone, but I can't do any physical shit, so don't ask me to do that. I think you could with your nails. But, dude, don't you agree? I really can't because of my nails. Yeah, well, so we were all talking, and we thought that Daenerys' character arc in the final season was actually spot on. How she sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that. I, right. just, I just watched uh, all of Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah, Michelle just went on her Game of Thrones How journey. Oh, mm -hmm. and uh, she, I she just was wish point. that I could watch House of the Dragon with absolutely <laughs> no I, I, knowledge of Game of Thrones. Tough. Like, if that was my superpower, I would wipe Game of really Thrones strong. from my brain <laughs> and watch House of Dragons, like, with no, no, like, you know, prior knowledge. Yeah. I mean, like, right now, I'm the crap out of some stuff. I'm like, wait, who's this? Who's this? Who's this? Who's this? Who's this? Who's this? It's, it just kind of fucking sucks. Like when you know, like when you watch a prequel and you know that the actual thing that like it like proceeds mm -hmm. ends terribly. Yeah. What is going on, people? What's up? <clears throat> What's with the phones? Sorry, call your wife. Oh, what do you want? Sorry, I called yes. my brother because I love him so much. There's two there. Oh, two All right, dude. I love you. I'll talk to you later. So it sounds like your friends would really like me. So just remember that you're always Heather Rice's little brother, and I love you. Boom! <laughs> 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 Was it a little yeah, too much? Or, yes. <laughs> <laughs> or I love you.